I'm certain you agree with me when I say that crisps are some of children's most favorite snacks but also on the other hand we also know that there are some of the snacks that are not very cheap when you go to find them in your shop or local supermarket. In today's video I want to show you how to make this very nice snack at home. Very crispy, very delicious. Your children are going to love them. You yourself are also going to love it. And in these hard economic times, you might also be wondering, even potatoes are so costly. At the shooting of this video, actually, potatoes are just skyrocketing in price. But the interesting thing about crisps is that you don't need a lot of potatoes. You might actually need two to five potatoes to be able to feed a number of children, you know, because it's basically a snack. Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing. So we will pray as we trust the Lord to grant us a fruitful time together. Indeed, Father, that's our prayer. You will grant us a fruitful time together and just help us to enhance our hospitality, especially as we minister to children and even to others with such a recipe we pray you will be with us and even during this video be with us in Jesus name amen so let's begin I began by peeling my Irish potatoes or waru and washed them thoroughly. I am using more potatoes than the five to seven I indicated in the ingredients because like I told you at this time, our potatoes are quite high in price because they've not yet been harvested. So I just happened to get the little ones in the market. That's why I doubled them to about 14 of them. But usually if you do about two to five large potatoes, that would be good. I am also using that peeler and I'm using the part that, that I'm showing you uh, because that will do a good job. It will be faster as well as uh, the potatoes will be uniform. But if you don't have this kind of a peeler that most likely you'll find at your local store or supermarket, simply use a knife. I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a knife to uh, peel very thin pieces of the potatoes in case you don't have this peeler because a knife will still do a good job it's just that it will be slower by the way excuse my peeler it's a bit uh, blunt we use it a lot uh, so i hope i need to figure out a way of uh, sharpening it or perhaps get another one but when you have a peeler like this one the job should be fast like I told you, I'll demonstrate with a knife how you can peel them into really tiny pieces. So you can see I've begun just making sure you peel them really thin. You don't have to th peel them too thin, but just ensure they are that thin. You can see very thin, though not paper thin, but really thin as you can see. Yeah, so you just need to do that. Perhaps engage the help of a younger child you know like 12 to 13 they should be able to peel with a knife really well so that it doesn't take you too long after all they are the ones really looking forward to this snack the potatoes you can see that i have put aside are actually the ones i couldn't get to when i'm finishing to peel the with my peeler or my grater i will try to thin them with a knife and then we will go ahead from there so once all of them are peeled you will notice that potatoes will have that uh, sticky touch on them when you have peeled them so what you will need to do is rinse them i gave them a thorough rinse in three washes you can even do more washes if you realize your potatoes are still uh, a bit starchy because the water needs to actually come out very clear to get rid of the starch so that they don't hold on to each other while you are frying them so that's our first rinse so i did two more rinses like i told you and you will see in a short while the final rinse That's our final rinse. You can notice the water is quite clear. So we are ready to go. So I'll drain them out 
and then transfer them to that container i forget the name to drain out the remaining water further so i'll let it rest in that container on top of a suitable uh, pan or uh, or bowl so that it can rest on that and most of the water drip drips off i'm also doing that just to ensure most of the water is gone so after this let it rest uh, somewhere where all the water can drip or you could even use a kitchen clean kitchen towel to do the same so once i allow the water to drip out i will still go ahead and uh, use a clean kitchen towel i'm using a smaller one so it may take me a number of the pieces to dry them on that towel but you can use a bigger one so transfer them to that towel arrange them on flat as much as you can uh, so that you can dry all of them either with another towel or the same like I'm doing so once you further dried them completely I have also dried my bowl so I'm going to transfer the ones that are dry onto that bowl I'm just doing that further because I think some were overlapping so I'm just making sure that all the pieces are dry completely. Like I told you our children love this snack and thankfully one of them is older so they will often ask for permission to make this snack because it's really delightful. You don't have to keep buying your crisps, you can do it at home, it's much cheaper and you're sure what is going into the crisps because you're doing it yourself. So we will do that to all the pieces until we are done. So that's our final one transferred into the container. So we'll go ahead and fry them. I had already started my oil going and started with a tester piece. I like to use a tester piece so that I'm sure when it is cooked and crispy like that one is then I know my oil is ready it's not too warm so that my crisps get soggy it's just hot and hot enough so just drop the crisp pieces into the salad oil remember don't put in too much again because if you put too much they'll take longer to cook and sometimes they get soggy and they acquire a certain a dryness that uh, is not very good when you just let them uh, be enough like the ones I have put in usually they'll cook faster but at the same time they will dry out with a nice crunchy crunchiness to them so once I have stirred them a little I will let them continue frying remember to occasionally keep turning them uh, after a short while come back and turn them and then allow them to cook until they are crispy and just firm like the way you know crisps get firm because that's how they will cook like those in the supermarket so we've gotten them to that point usually one of the signs for me that they are ready is that the oil salad oil and the crisp stop uh, bubbling really vigorously <laughs> they slow down in the bubbles i think bubbling because the crisps are now firm so they are not uh, the oil is not bubbling the way it usually will do and you will see that in a short while so there you go you can see what i'm saying not very bubbly like when we began and remember let your fire be on hot you know on the high one because you don't want them to get soggy and therefore they don't cook so see that can you see that crisp crunchy um, breaking of the crisp like I did so that shows they are ready so transfer them on to a paper, paper towel lined tray so that they can get rid of most of the salad oil and then you can now transfer them into the bowl that you want to serve them in so i'll let them rest on that tray at least so that most of the oil extra any extra oil can go on the paper towels so now we are on to our next batch and uh, remember to just cook them this way 
until all the crisps are ready and then we can go ahead and enjoy them. So there are our crisps ready and uh, crispy and firm and I'm telling you, you will enjoy your crisps. Try them. Just follow the procedure I've shown you. You can see the crispiness of the crisps. Now, the last thing we will do is add salt to them. I'm using about a quarter teaspoon of salt. So don't use too much salt because they may look a lot. But if you put too much salt, you may not like them. We get to the tendency of actually over salting them. So use a quarter a teaspoon for that amount or even less so that's what i'm doing i don't know what that action is called but i am trying to mix them up so that the salt can get to all the crisps and if you do that a few times like i'm doing they will actually be ready to go and the salt will have distributed all around them now those are the people that are enjoying these crisps wow they are really tasty i'm sure you're also going to enjoy them as well when you try them or even for your children or children guests they're going to enjoy this a great deal as you saw my children enjoyed that snack a great deal and of course i personally enjoyed it very simple very easy to make ingredients available as well as the cost is basically I mean, you can't compare them with what you will buy in your shop or supermarket. So try it and I'm sure you will enjoy it a great deal. So thank you for joining me. Please look out for our next recipe. Again, a very simple, delightful one that I trust you will enjoy. And until that next recipe, continue practicing hospitality. Bye.